Robert Burns is Scotland's national bard and his poetry is timeless uh, and we still celebrate him both in Scotland and all over the world. I think what makes Burns relevant today is the fact that he's writing about really human things. It might be a hundred years since these things were written, but actually the kind of basics of human relationships and interconnectedness with the landscape and love and loss are things that really still resonate with people. Similar to Shakespeare, Robert Burns has a quality of writing poetry in such a way that anyone can take something from it. And I think that will continue to have a generation after generation. One of the, the main advantages or benefits of acquiring this collection is that now it will be publicly accessible um, for generations to come at the National Library of Scotland. Right from the moment that the hero comes into the building, it's going to be practically helpful for academics, but at the same time, it's going to be accessible for anyone that wants to come in and have a look at them. With some of the Burns materials kind of coming home, it's coming back to where it started and, and where, you know, potentially it belongs. I think the major one for us is the, the joint acquisition with the National Library of Scotland of the first commonplace book, which is really a sort of compendium of ideas that's been pulled together a little bit like a kind of scrapbook. It's one of the most important um, pieces of writing that Burns produced in his life that was still in private hands. What we see here is Burns' poetic development. So a lot of the works that are in here didn't actually make it into the Kilmarnock edition of his poems, but what we can see is Burns testing things out, seeing what's working, what isn't working, and honing his poetic craft. That is jointly owned by the NTS and the National Library of Scotland, but its usual home would be the National Library of Scotland uh, because we have the facilities to make it available in public reading rooms for people to access safely. One of the best things about visiting the cottage is that you can go to these places that were here when Burns was alive and this area, but also the, the general kind of Ayrshire region, are really influential on him throughout his career and throughout his life and they, they come up again and again in his work. We've got a fragment of the poem The Briggs of Air, which I really like because it's got that really direct personal connection to where we are just now. It's um, a sort of argument between the two bridges and basically the old bridge says to the new, well, I'm going to outlive you and I'm going to be standing here a hundred years after you are. I like that you can see bits where they've scored things out or they've smudged the ink. You can look at uh, one Burns poem next to another and see that he's written one really fast or that he's written one on the back of something else and you kind of get a sense of that kind of need to write things down as well and it just makes them more human, more real. You can see the difference between the sort of correspondence with people as well versus the, the kind of working documents of him writing his poetry or maybe editing his songs so you get a bit more of personality from a letter. Among the other highlights that we have is the only surviving letter that Robert Burns wrote to his father. It's an interesting letter because it gives us an insight into Burns' mental state at this point. He's suffering probably from some kind of depression and he actually writes to his father and says that poverty and obscurity await me and this is what he thinks his legacy is going to be and obviously we know that it's very different from that. <laughs>